Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I'm taking a look at uh, some of the ways in which I organize some of my online classes. Um, specifically, what I'm looking at is uh, creating a learning management system um, or a content management system. A lot of times we'll talk about a learning management system and we'll think about you know a, an LMS. So a learning management system might be something that your school provides for you. If you're in higher ed, you might have a Blackboard or Desire to Learn. Um, you might also have a content management system. And a content management system is basically a way to uh, gather materials and send them off to students and bring them back. Um, so there's a lot of different versions. Um, but, but pretty much if you're looking at an online classroom, you're thinking about ways to connect with students, have them share materials with you and, and send them back, um, you know, give some feedback, give some announcements. Um, but for the most part, it's uh, terribly limited. Um, one of the negatives that I have, or one of the, the, the concerns that I have, I should say, in uh, using some of these proprietary tools. So if I use like Blackboard or Desire to Learn or one of those, um, you know, content management systems or learning management systems that my institution provides is that once my students leave or hypothetically let's suggest let, let's think that you know maybe I leave um, then what happens is a lot of my content is trapped behind in that learning management system or, or that content management system also um, you know there is this mindset that or there there the structure of it basically holds that your content exists from you know, class to class, when the class is over, the sort of the, the learning ends there, um, and there's no real way for students to get back to that. Yes, they can go back um, and click through to previous classes many times when they get in the system, but sometimes that's closed off. I've noticed that when I'm teaching classes, some of my classes will give me like a date where the class will turn off. Um, and so we have to have questions about um, you know what is the what what are our thoughts about about learning in these environments so and, and at the same time what I've noticed is uh, as I've been doing videos about Google Sites and Google Classroom and some of these other learning management systems or content management systems or these online learning spaces people have been contacting me and, and asking well how do you integrate this in with other tools and and what I feel like is they're trying to just take the structure in Blackboard and these other services and build it in uh, Google Classroom or build it into a Google site. Um, and I think that this is short sighted. And so that's the purpose of this video. Um, and so specifically what I'm going to look at is is two different wikis. I'm going to look at the tale of two wikis. Um, these are wikis that I've created in the past. These were, um, you know, a a website for a classroom. I'm going to talk about two different structures for that. Both of these were built using Wikispaces, a free online uh, wiki editing and wiki creation tool. Really powerful tool. Um, great resource. Was first introduced to this by teachers um, a number of years ago, probably about a decade ago now. Um, and so I use it in a lot of my classes. I pretty much substitute uh, you know, I, I will use this or use Google Sites for uh, quick throwaway websites that I don't really care about later on. And so uh, both of these wikis that we're going to take a look at were created using Wikispaces. And what I want you to pay attention to is the, the structure and the purpose of the wikis. So I'm doing two different things. And, and the reason, once again, why I'm showing this video is I want a, us to break out of our thinking um, that we have to have a specific place where we interact with students um, and things exist in, in certain spaces. Um, and I want to look at the opportunity to create something that's a little bit more open as we work with our students. Um, in subsequent videos, what I'm going to look at is how do we take this initial philosophy or the thinking here in this video and how do we turn this into a, a learning environment or, or learning activities um, that would lead to a domain of one's own and students creating their digital identity or teaching and learning in open hybrid or blended spaces. We'll get there to, you know, to all the other stuff. Um, 
So the first wiki I want to take a look at is one that I used a number of years ago, um, and this was for a, a reading adolescent lit class. And a lot of the content that's in here is uh, stuff from uh, you know worksheets or assignments I would send to students. It's from the syllabus. A lot of this is basic content that you would have, and it would exist you know in your learning management system. So a student would log into Blackboard. Or whatever service you have and they would see these comments um, a lot of this stuff too if you use Google classroom this is announcements that you could have so basically I, I had this set up um, and what I did with this class is I had a different website so I had a, a totally different wiki built for each section of each class um, and the, the reason for that is in each section I would have 24 25 students and I wanted the students that were in that class to be able to see the work of other students in the class, use the work of other students in the class. Um, but I didn't want students outside of the class to be able to add content. So I wanted the material and the information to be open and online. Um, I wanted it open online so that after the students were done, they could go back in and check on each other's work um, or, or find their work and find their materials. Um, but I did not want other people to be able to add to that content. So I wanted to have one group and that group stays in there. So a lot of the, the info, so once again, I had a new wiki or a new website for every single class. So you can imagine if you're teaching three or four sections of one class in one year, that could be a lot of stuff to monitor. Thankfully for this class, I would teach one section of reading adolescent lit uh, for each semester. So I might teach this like twice in a year. But nevertheless, this was open and online. There are about 20, 25 students in this class. Um, you know, I would give initial open announcements and stuff like that. Um, but then what's interesting here is I would use this as a form of an open, you know, content management system as an open way to collect and share information. So as an example, you know, I would share the syllabus for the class. Um, I would also share assignments. Now, none of this is terribly new. This is stuff that you would normally have, you know, in your content management system. But I would list out the assignments and the, the rubrics for those assignments so that students could grab them. Um, but one of the other things that I would do is instead of, you know, I would give students an assignment and they would sort of, they would work on the assignment. They would work on the document for the assignment or the PDF or the Google Doc. They would work on that assignment and they would email that Word doc to me with their paper or their lesson plan or whatever you know you're having them build they would email me that document that document would you know live in my hard drive or on my email in my storage collect dust in my hard drive I would assess it I would give them feedback I would send that document back to them they would read it um, and it was pretty much a conversation between myself and them um, and no one else was involved in that uh, discussion you know that the assessment practice as we looked at their work so one of the things that I did in this is you now once again this is one website that it's open and online so anyone can see it but then at the same time um, just the students that are in this they're the only ones that are, are paying attention to this so one of the things that we did is if they had to give a talk for class or to do an assignment one of the things that we would do is we would say okay we would add them as editors to the wiki and then we would have them upload or share the materials to the wiki so now the class wiki becomes a, a, a one space to collect and share all information so these were class assignments so they would give author presentations they would present their document and materials and then come into class and speak to it um, they would also you know share reading strategies that they would use in class um, you know they would create author uh, annotated book lists and share that out with the group so any and all assignments they would come in here and they would add their materials to the class and then the nice thing is that other students can see those materials and and, and review those and use them in their work now this this one section had uh, you know six or seven students as opposed to the larger group so there's fewer assignments in here um, but what we also had is students would create blogs 
that would exist outside of their school. So they would have, or outside of this classroom. So they would have blogs and they would regularly journal and share materials and share information. And then this would be like a hub to have them link all of their blogs. So once again, this first wiki is an open space. The students that are in the course or in the sections, you know, in individual sections, they would come into this and they would leave their materials. So, you know, once again, I'm sharing an assignment with them through the wiki. They're doing the assignment and we're talking about it in class. Then they're coming back to uh, the wiki and they are adding their materials to this website to this wiki um, and, and other students are able to see and learn from and use those materials we started thinking about you know one once again this is several years old i started to have students developing their own blogs and pulling in information for those blogs but it really wasn't that ad, um, advanced as of yet um, and for the most part this is a is one online space where they're sharing materials so looking at this one website that lives as the online home or the, the, the content management system or LMS for this class, I, I want to take a, a totally different look and look at a different wiki that I set up. So this is a wiki that I set up for my ed psych classes. So once again, um, each semester uh, I might teach one section of of ed psych and i might have one section of like a language and literacy class or a reading adolescent lit class so my reading adolescent lit classes what i would do in my literacy classes i would keep those groups self-contained um, you know i'd have a, a number of students in in the section they would read and write together they would share materials together but i really didn't want that material going out and and working with other groups whereas when i taught ed psych a lot of the content, a lot of the materials for Ed Psych, this was stuff that uh, students in sections year after year, they might also want to use. So this, once again, was a wiki that I have. It was open online. It still is open and online. Um, once again, a, an initial landing page to talk about what this information is all about. I would list, you know, the different assignments that we have for class and the, the rubrics associated with it. I would include the readings for the course and let them know, um, you know, what materials, and this was supplemental materials to a textbook. I would have, uh, you know, larger student assignments and student activities that we would have. The syllabus, so I'd come in section after section, year after year, and, and change out the link for the syllabus as class began. Um, but there's a couple different things in here that are, I believe, of interest. So, Two different things. One, uh, ed, psych, ed, psych, ed psych can be a challenge for a lot of students as they pick up a lot of the different theories and perspectives. So I wanted to have one place where there is sort of an overview of the content written by the students. And so two different ways I did that. One was we created a, a course annotated bibliography. And so what students would do is as they would go out and read online, as they would uh, use uh, research and they would cite materials for papers, they would come back to this one spot and they would add in citations to our collective annotated bibliography. So once again, if this is a website, if this is a resource that's used section after section, year after year with students, then you have you know, you have 20, 25 students in one section, and then the next semester, another 25, 25 students. So after a couple of years, you can see you'd have 100 to 200 to 300 students that all are studying ed, ed psych with me. They all are reading the same materials. They're all addressing the same assignments, thinking through the same content, and they as they work through they're leaving behind these little digital breadcrumbs these these you know markers and these and examples of work over time so the nice thing is you know our first year our first two or three sections that would come through there wouldn't be a lot of information but then after you know we would have the class running for um, a year at least you have 75 100 students come through now what I would suggest to students is if you're having a, a tough time 
figuring out the content or you're, ha or you're writing a piece and you want to think about culturally responsive classroom management strategies, what you could do is come into this annotated bibliography that has been created by your peers, by students that have been through this class and this program before you, so you can go in and take a look at their materials and use those resources to get you started. Um, and then, once again, pay it forward by coming back and leaving these materials. So, a tremendous resource. Once again, one website where students every semester or every section, I would add the students in and I would um, leave the old students in the wiki so that they could sign back in and see the materials. I would take away their editing privileges, but at least they could come in and see the materials and see what's out there. So one of the ways that we would help them uh, create content to teach each other, and now this website becomes a resource for the class, one of the ways is the annotated bib. The other uh, way that we had students create content for the course is we had what I called an encyclopedia. And what I wanted to do was make an in-house wiki. So we had this wiki spaces site, and this is one place for us to uh, share material that students write and they create as they search and sift through the class, as they're you know working their way through the content. But the challenge is a lot of times when we you know research these materials, you're reading and you're researching materials that um, you know might be a little bit dense or might be a little bit difficult to read. So my thinking was that perhaps it might be a little bit easier if you read content that has been written you know by a peer, someone that's pretty much at your same level. So what we started doing is one of the assignments that I would normally have is you know as an ed psych class go find a, a famous theoretician, think about a theoretical perspective, think about, you know, a, a research experiment, you know, or a construct that has to do with teaching and learning and assessment, and teach us about that, you research it, teach us about that, present it to the class, and then let's talk about what it means for teaching and learning. So all of these disparate assignments over a number of years once again, previously this would be in a Word doc, student would email it to me, I get the email, I assess it, send it back, they look at the Word doc or do not look at the Word doc. Um, instead, what I'm doing is I'm having them take that material and basically create a page on our class wiki and this now becomes not just their assignment, but it becomes a, a, a learning resource, a teaching resource for the class and future members of this of this class. Um, so once again, it's it's not unusual to have a student go in and research constructivism and talk about what it means and include multimodal content. So we have text and we have images and we have videos, um, but talk about what this means and then also tell us. Um, who created this, when did they create it, give us your resources that you use to create this material. So now we're building this assessment into, um, you know, it, it's turning into a teaching resource for our students. Um, some of the benefits of, of this type of work, uh, students indicated that their level of audience and their level of authenticity went up as a result of these assignments um, because they said that um, they didn't really care that um, and I'm and I'm heavily editing their words but for the most part they didn't care that only I was reading their assignments and giving them feedback now when I changed it and their peers were reading it and and they were you know evaluating to a certain extent um, I did not have students giving grading each other's work or giving scores or or reviewing at any point but just the fact that they knew their peers could see this made them want to elevate their level of of effort in the work so their their consideration of audience and authenticity in their work went up um, because they knew that other people would be looking at it other than just the classroom instructor. Um, so that, that was interesting to me. Um, so once again, um, this is a totally different version of the use of a wiki in creating a, a, a learning space for my classes. The first version that we talked about um, basically was one wiki open and online, only the students that are in that specific section of that 
um, you know, and during that semester were in and they could edit. Yes, it was open online, so anyone could review the materials, um, but only the students that were in that section were included. So new sections would come in. I would basically have a new website, a new wiki for that group. So basically out online, I have like seven to 10 of this exact wiki with different students and different work product. Um, I would share the materials out and the assignments out through the wiki. Students would um, do the work for the assignments and they would upload those materials to the wiki for everyone else to review. Um, when the section would end, I would not close down the wiki. I would leave it open and online. But when a new section came in or a new class or a new semester came in, they would get a whole new website. I never, ever, ever went back to a previous wiki or website and said, here, look at what something someone did last year. Um, so once it was done, I basically let it um, live out online and did not touch it. The opposite is this wiki that I set up for uh, my ed psych class. What I would do is year after year, section after section, I would pump new students in. The old students that were in there, I would take away editing privileges, but still leave them as part of the wiki so they could always come back to it and find it if they signed into wiki spaces and they didn't remember the URL for this. Um, once again, same thing, I would launch out. You can see I have different pages for different weeks. What I would do is I would share out the slide decks and the PowerPoints and everything else and all of the materials for class. I would launch the assignments or announce the assignments here and then any and all work that they constructed for the class, they would upload that to the wiki as well. The difference with this, the major difference with this, is this is something that year after year, I like I said, new students would be added, the same students would remain, and now the work from previous students would be used to teach newer students that came into the class. Um, so we're constantly building up this resource. And, and one of the hopes for me was the Ed Psych book for this class was really expensive. And so one of the things I was thinking about is, is there a way to really ratchet this up so that at some point um, we don't have to purchase uh, new Ed Psych books so that at some point we can sort of just replace it with the materials that were on the wiki. Um, so very valuable resource, great opportunity to build up digital skills, but also focus on content. Um, and, and it worked well for, for us and for our students. So hopefully this is of value to you. Um, I, I wanted to share these to have us think a little bit more about how we frame learning and how we interact with our learners. Um, I don't use wiki spaces as much anymore. Now I, I've moved into, I've built up more of the students building their own blogs and setting up their own blogs. And then I have one hub and I'll have future videos about that. Um, but hopefully this is of, of value to you. Please, by all means, ask me any questions if you have it. Uh, I will have subsequent videos talking about other learning management systems and content management systems and ways to uh, support learners and scaffold learners in online spaces. But with that being said, thanks a ton for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, if you need to, um, and you should, you should go over to my website, subscribe to my uh, newsletter if you don't already. I'm at wioburn.com. All of the materials for this and then some are there. Um, but by all means, subscribe to the channel, like the video or thumbs up that video. Uh, give me comments if needed. And hopefully you have a great rest of your day.